dear students in the previous session we learned a lot about what are drugs how are they classified and the therapeutic action of uh, different forms of uh, drugs we learned i hope now you are very familiar with the terms used in medicinal chemistry and you started going through the wrapper of the medicines and bottles of different syrups uh, and started checking what is the chemical involved in curing a particular problem today our concentration is going to be on to food additives and cleansing agent we may be learning a little bit of uh, introductory ideas on polymers too i hope these areas are very interesting parts in your learning so in particular we are going to talk about food additives what are food additives you may have a big question now why to add something into the food we go to different uh, places malls and uh, maybe into the grocery shops you can see lot of uh, items which are useful for our day to day life maybe a grocery item maybe a fruit juices or we collect in the form of health drinks in all their bottles you can see it is beautifully wrapped and also a content uh, is available there they talking about the nutritious value of the particular product uh, and what are all the chemicals added into it uh, all that is listed out have you ever had a chance to look at them today you try to look into one of the health drink bottles uh, the wrapper page and you will understand ye with the, the naturally available materials which are given for us in the form of powder to form it or some combination they are also adding certain chemicals into food you have a big question now are they good for us why to add such chemicals yes that's why we are going to learn today about food additives sometimes the normal food which are good for our health uh, uh, cannot be given in just like in the raw format we have to add certain uh, materials which are additives uh, and that may enhance the aroma part of the food sometimes they may give a nutritious uh, value sometimes uh, they may give an excellent color and attractive color so practically when you look at the food you you will tend to get attracted towards the food so that is how it is being prepared so uh, today we are going to talk about different categories in which uh, these particular food additives are being classified sometimes uh, in the wrappers you can see only the numbers they may be talking about 323 or 47080 e like that and you have to understand they are talking about some of them are emulsifiers some of them are food colors added otherwise all those uh, food materials you see in the shop may not be so attractive and uh, why to add all of them we have certain categories what are they first one we have to talk about the aroma part of the food this aroma in chemistry we learned uh, we are learning about aromatic compounds aroma means smell sweet smelling only when the particular food is having a good uh, flavor aroma then will have will feel happy taking the food at the prime objective they add a certain chemicals uh, which are giving a good flavor for the food we purchase then they talk about emulsifiers what are emulsifiers we learned in surface surface chemistry lesson there an emul 
emulsifier is a material which will work in between an hydrophilic fellow and an hydrophobic fellow. If they are uh, not taken care, then they will get separated. Imagine you are purchasing a fruit juice and where the water soluble part and maybe an uh, organic part is available just for example and you go for the shop and that uh, shopkeeper is giving you juice where both the layers are separated then you may be worried about the nature of the food and quality of food so that time the emulsifier's job is very important so emulsifier will do the job of keeping both the hydrophilic hydrophobic part always uh, stable Next, we have to talk about certain chemicals which are added with, to give an attractive color. Most often we talk about uh, attractive color means food colors only. You cannot add uh, some organic dyes which are used for some other purpose, you can't add. They should be food color. They should easily get uh, metabolized uh, or sometimes uh, without metabolism they can be excreted out through the urine so such uh, materials only they prefer they can't take any material sometimes uh, if they are being added uh, they may go and give some irritation to our body so that is our job to check whether it's good or uh, bad so next one they may be talking about some buffering compounds so the buffering compounds in nature is to work between uh, two of the um, uh, reagents uh, and uh, thereby it will, it will have to have some storage capacity. It will uh, stop the growth of uh, yeast of some microbes inside. So there another thing is very important we have to learn about the preservative. So preservatives or uh, uh, chemicals which are added uh, purposely to keep the food longer they call it as a shelf life period suppose uh, the food item is being placed in the uh, shop and for a particular period of time it should be stable and then only the customers will go and purchase them so that should also be taken care in uh, preservative uh, uh, part so all these uh, we have learned sometimes we will be talking about the presence of uh, vitamins and uh, minerals so the uh, vitamins and minerals uh, for a healthy uh, person they are very important they are vital and if they are added along with the food material then uh, the nutritious value of the food will get increased. For example, if you check these uh, health drinks, uh, in all these health drinks, uh, along with uh, the required uh, food material, they add this uh, vitamins and minerals too. So they are good for the growing children. So that's how they add all these things. So if you look into the aspect of our uh, food additives, uh, we talk about sweetening agents also, they call it as uh, artificial sweeteners. Sometimes uh, we talk about um, uh, food, if it is sweeter in nature, kids and uh, younger ones will take easy. So for that purpose they add uh, uh, sweet giving substances. So that will add a sweetness to the food. Sometimes they are natural, sometimes they are artificial too. So they are again called as artificial sweetening agents. So these are the areas, categories we are talking about the food additives. Now you would have understood the importance of looking deep into the wrapper page of the um, food wrappers and then uh, uh, you started you start checking the chemical nature of the additives but sometimes when we go to a very local uh, food for example um, uh, our boys are very fond of uh, chili chicken 
and that orange red color added to that chili chicken before it is being fried if you could see sometimes uh, the stain orange red color uh, pertains or it is uh, available in the fingers of the people who are preparing it for more than one day or two days time and if you ask uh, some of the scientists they say they are not safe for the health because and that uh, may not be food colors uh, sometimes it may be a synthetic dye to give attractive color to the food they may be added so you should be really cautious sometimes they use the same oil also we'll be talking about that and um, whenever uh, we are uh, getting a food from outside we should be very careful whether it is uh, palatable and it is good for our health whether uh, the expiry date is uh, uh, is in the range all that you have to check okay now let us go in deep into one by one that is uh, first category we are going to talk about uh, preservatives Uh, as I told you, what are preservatives? And uh, the preservatives job is very important uh, in some of the essential food items which we purchase from uh, market. Mm, uh, let us take example of uh, milk. Milk is a perishable one, and you can see maybe for uh, fresh milk for three to four hours, uh, it uh, it has a good life. It gives beautiful aroma, and the color will be very good. and after that time slowly the nature of the milk gets disturbed and you may be asking it is purely obtained from the cow and it should have a good um, stability why milk gets spoiled a lot of factors are responsible for that what are they starting from the temperature starting from the atmospheric influence we have to talk about a few things particularly when the milking process is done there may be one or two bacteria which will enter into the milk uh, through the outside atmospheric uh, air and afterwards they have the capacity to start multiplying because of the warmth that is why after uh, the milk is uh, being um, milked from the cows uh, and uh, the um, and the farmer goes to a nearby chilling station and he chills the milk less than 0 uh, degree sometimes they will uh, chill it to minus degrees so the purpose of doing this is uh, during the chilling process what happens uh, all the multiplicity of this bacteria will get uh, cut out and then the milk goes to the milk dairies in the milk dairy is uh, they will go for a process called as a pasteurization of milk that is sterilization part of the milk that means even before chilling there may be one or two bacteria is available they will be safe inside the milk and after reaching the place the job of the milk dairy is to segregate the milk according to the quality of the milk and then they will go for bulk pasteurization you would have learned around 80 to 90 degrees celsius they will be boiling the milk and suddenly they will start cooling it so during this process uh, almost all the bacteria uh, which are in the milk will get killed then they won't stop with that then they will cool it and they will go for the packing process and the chilled milk only will uh, will be supplied for the domestic use and this is one kind of a preserv preservation that is uh, you go for pasteurization or uh, heat sterilization process or go for the uh, chilling process and some of the food articles you take uh, that will go for the next level also so next level uh, sir they will go for irradiation with uh, some uv radiations ultraviolet rays and that you can see even your uh, home that uh, water filter as a uv filter uv lamp available inside that has the capacity to uh, kill the germs 
in the water. And uh, that germs by, for the naked eye may not be visible. So we have to do this process of irradiation and killing. So sometimes uh, if it is milk, this may be the process of uh, preservation. Uh, sometimes if the food, is, uh, food has to stay for a longer period of time, they go for different uh, uh, preservatives. So your mother is doing a job, good job at home. Uh, she is uh, preserving the pickles. Yes, for preserving pickles she is using uh, vinegar. What is the chemical form of vinegar? It is uh, nothing but uh, acetic acid. Vinegar is CH3COOH, ethanoic acid, two carbon atoms, ethanoic acid or it is called as acetic acid. And uh, some of the food stuff, they go for sodium metasulfide, NH2S, Na2S2O5 metasulfide. And some of the foods that they go for benzoic acid, sorbic acid. Benzoic acid has the formula, the benzene ring is attached to the acid group. Or go for sodium benzoate, C6H5, COO, CH2, COO, ENA, sodium benzoate. All these are very good preservatives. Sometimes you can go for even uh, uh, sulfur dioxide. The purpose of uh, adding all these preservatives is to certain preservatives are working like a military man. Certain preservatives are working like a BSF. Certain preservatives are working like a policeman. You may be wondering I am, why I am referring to uh, these examples. So suppose you go for a bottled uh, drink which is uh, perishable, for example you go for uh, Tropicana or other things and Maza and all and after uh, uh, 10 days of manufacture you look at the way the liquid is available inside the bottle, maybe a pale yellow or crancy layer on the top surface and the liquid sometimes a deep yellow colored solution at the bottom as I told you and the bottle also it is given please shake it uh, well before you drink it if you don't do that what happens certain um, uh, chemicals uh, which are added in the form of liquid they will do like military man or uh, a BSF force that is border security force uh, they will stay at the top portion of the juice. When you are uh, opening the bottle, they will stay uh, on the top layer. And you drink the top layer, that means you are drinking only the preservative first. And then after some time you leave the bottle open, uh, what happens? Now no border security force, uh, the microbe from the air atmosphere can easily enter into the juice. After uh, so 6 or 7 hours you drink that, you have the complaint of uh, stomach upset. And you have to rush to the doctor, the doctor will say there is food poisoning. Uh, this is a major uh, thing you have to understand. So what you have to do when you are uh, mixing it or shaking it well, the preservative will get mixed with all the liquid, thereby every time you drink and place the bottle outside, the soldiers will come up and do the job of uh, killing. And what is their regular habit? They will oxidize um, particular um, germs which are entering inside, thereby they preserve the food. Microorganism will be killed. So the job of preservative is to, they may be asking in a tumor, the job of uh, preservative is to kill the microorganisms uh, in the entry point itself. Uh, uh, that means uh, food spoiling microorganisms have to be killed. To keep the food preserved for longer, to increase the shelf life of the food. So sometimes the, they may ask uh, Tuma, what are food additives? And that food additives I told you, 
the extra material which is added to the food in order to increase the nutritive value or practical value or they may be increasing the um, attractiveness of the food, flavor of the food. Okay? And, and um, in, um, in the preservatives, we talk about chemical preservatives and in uh, chemical preservatives, some of them in the minimal dosage they add so that they don't disturb our um, intestine or they won't give any side effects to our body. The next area we have to talk about antioxidants being uh, students learning chemistry you should be able to understand what are uh, oxidants first. Oxidants are uh, certain materials or chemicals or microorganisms. Uh, they have the ability to oxidize the food. That means uh, they will spoil the food by the process of oxidation. What is the duty of a microorganism? Microorganism will go and spoil the food by increasing the acidity or sometimes they will uh, make the food fermented, broken into unwanted combinations eh? and sometimes they will go for uh, oxidation process. That means the uh, free radicals will be sometimes uh, released. So free radicals are uh, highly oxidizing nature. So they particularly you can take uh, um, food preparations uh, using oil, fats, they will get easily oxidized. Sometimes you can see you purchase the snack items from the big shops eh? and you bring it home after 3-4 days you can see a rancid smell, a bad smell is being spread from the uh, food item. Fried food item, oil fried things. Because uh, uh, that they call it as uh, rancid nature of the oil. That the, the oil uh, got oxidized and turned into an unwanted product. So how to remove them? The free radicals have to be removed. So elaborate discussion on free radical we learned in the past also. Today also we will be learning about that. These free radicals have an odd electron. They have the capacity to go and join with the neighboring molecule and destroy them. So for that purpose we have to use for butyl hydroxy tolvin or butyl hydroxy anisole. These are the free radical absorbers. When these materials are added in a food, the, after the preparation is over or during the process of preparation, they land these antioxidants along with the food item. And when they come to our uh, place, these chemicals will be there. If you, if you closely see in the wrapper nowadays, the government is very strict on following this food safety norms and it should be wrap, uh, wrapped properly and also they should be checked with the microbial activity and uh, they are asking the manufacturers to be very strict with uh, the mentioning of date of manufacture and the expiry of the particular food. So, these free radicals uh, inhibitors uh, are not added, then obviously what will happen? The food will be spoiled by these microorganisms uh, and uh, they may not be good for the intake. So, this is uh, one of the antioxidants uh, we, we are adding into the food. Sometimes uh, the uh, antioxidants in the form of S42 or sulfide these can also be added sulfides can also be added so they will behave like antioxidants the next area we have to talk about is uh, sweetening agents there are two types available what are they? Some are sugar substituents and others are called as 
artificial sweetening agents. Others are called as artificial sweetening agents. So in um, sugar substituents, particularly whenever we talk about any food which is sweet in nature, we always talk about glucose or sucrose and we talk about honey. These are the materials, uh, sugar is nothing but our sucrose. These are the materials commonly we refer as uh, sweet in nature. Or we can use jaggery. All these are having the same combination of glucose, fructose and uh, sucrose. Sugar cone juice, sweet in nature. But sometimes, uh, uh, these uh, we learnt in uh, the previous session about uh, drug and receptors uh, and this uh, insulin is uh, it at the walls of the cell wall and it is uh, doing the job of regulating the sugar. You would have seen the um, diabetic patients also, the importance of insulin and controlling of uh, ins uh, the sugar. Uh, for that they take particular varieties of uh, um, tablets. But in uh, sweetening agents, the job of uh, uh, the sugar taken will get easily metabolized inside the body with the help of insulin. That is how uh, sugar, glucose, fructose will uh, get metabolized. They get converted into useful products for our body. And uh, but certain materials available, we can uh, take uh, sorbitol and uh, xylitol or mannitol. These are sugar substituents. They are actually naturally available molecule. If you look into sorbitol and uh, mannitol, they are epimers out of uh, fructose we get. We will be learning that. And they are naturally available materials. They have the capacity to give sweetness. But the difference we have to understand, they are not like the glucose or sucrose. They easily, they won't get metabolized, they does not get metabolized, maybe through the excretory tract they will come out. So this is uh, sugar substituent, and we talk about uh, the uh, natural materials. But we, uh, we talk about uh, artificial ones, chemicals. All the times so for a preparation of a 50 paise toffee, the chocolate manufacturing company cannot add all the uh, sucrose, glucose and fructose, they are all honey, or they are all very costly. Certain varieties of uh, ice cream you can see, certain where most of the kids are interested in um, taking uh, chocolates, ice cream and juices and jelly, all these things are the sweet in nature. But the sweetness giving substance are all costly in nature. So how could they manufacture such food with a lower price? They go for chemicals which are synthesized in the laboratory. So artificial means you have to understand they are synthetic material. In the lab, those chemicals are known to be sweeter. Uh, look at the word sweeter than sucrose. You may be asking, sir, how many times sweeter? There are drugs available. In 2018, they have identified a particular um, um, chemical which is 1600 times sweeter than sucrose. Recently they have identified, uh, they say as under research, they say that is uh, 3 lakh times uh, sweeter than uh, uh, our normal sucrose. And those uh, chemicals you have a small uh, tint or drop in your teeth for a week time will have a sweet taste. But what is the bad side of them? Some of them are not good for the health. 
they don't get even metabolized uh, and if they come through the excretory tract uh, it is well and good but sometimes they stay in one part of the body and constantly cause irritation not all of them some of them will give uh, uh, troubles for the internal organs but sometimes uh, they will lead to uh, carcinogenic issues so i mean to say cancer producing nature so the artificial sweetening agents we can uh, think of sucralose and sometimes in most of the coffees they mention our uh, chocolates uh, saccharin all these uh, are the artificial sweetening agents they will give they will impart a sweet taste better than the normal sugar but they are artificially synthesized in that the next content we have to talk about cleansing agents what are cleansing agents do we need to talk about cleansing agents yes obviously that means for cleaning our cells and also to clean our textile or the cloth we are using we require the presence of a cleansing agents cleansing agents are nothing but cleaning agents and these days we are talking more about the usage of soaps in and hand wash and sanitizers for cleaning our hands and fingers and um, before going for understanding about this cleansing agent soaps and uh, detergents uh, let us understand why to clean and uh, how come dirt enter into our body and uh, our uh, textile or uh, cloth materials usually if you touch any part of your body it is a little oily in nature so it is like a greasy material so that greasy material will invite the dirt and the unwanted dust particles from the atmosphere when we are going out when we are playing they will go and get sedimented or fixed to over that oily surface we learned in surface chemistry that a formation of a, an adsorbed layer over the surface will happen now by normal means uh, we can't remove them we have sometimes we use uh, water to wash our face even then the oiliness doesn't go our face doesn't look so bright then we are seeking the help of the cleansing agents yes cleansing agents uh, are mainly two types uh, soaps and detergents what are soaps what are detergents with the detergent we can't take bath with the soap we are unable to wash the cloth to some extent we can go not to the greater extent and uh, we have to understand the soaps are uh, mild in nature but detergents are uh, strong in nature what is the chemistry of soap soap is nothing but long chain triglycerides or we can talk about the esters of higher fatty acids they mostly higher fatty acids most of them are the sodium or the potassium salts or of higher fatty acids can be animal fat or vegetable oil you can also prepare the soap at home uh, the required things are you need coconut oil some vegetable oil and you need the presence of little bit of sodium hydroxide and your table salt or uh, sodium chloride will do the job pour the oil into a glass beaker take another measuring cylinder and measure 30 ml 20% naoh solution into it 
Pour it into the beaker containing coconut oil. Stir the mixture vigorously using a glass rod. Touch the beaker from outside. It will be observed that the beaker is warm. This is due to the exothermic reaction between vegetable oil, that is coconut oil and sodium hydroxide solution. Place the beaker on a Bunsen burner and heat it until the mixture becomes a whitish paste. The mixture is made up of soap in suspension form and glycerol. Remove the beaker from the flame and allow it to cool. Dip a red litmus paper in the suspension formed. When dipped in the suspension, red litmus paper changes to blue color. This shows that the soap solution is basic in nature. Dip a blue litmus paper in the suspension. The color of blue litmus paper remains the same. This shows that soap suspension is not acidic in nature. Add 15 grams of common salt into the suspension. Stir it well with a glass rod. It is observed that the soap is precipitated out as a solid. Take a filter paper and fix it in a filter funnel and hold a glass rod over the funnel. Take the beaker containing soap and pour it over the glass rod and filter the mixture. Soap is left on the filter paper. Take a filter paper and remove soap from the funnel using a spatula and place it on the filter paper. Dry the soap by pressing it with another filter paper. Cut it into the desired shape with a knife. Soap is thus prepared. Formatic acid. And you can take the example the formula C16 H36O2 is formatic acid. One of the hydrogen will be removed. In the place they may go for a sodium. So this is the chemical formula of our soap. We want the structure. This is how they give the structure of our soap. And if you closely observe the structure of soap, you can understand how they cleanse the dirt out of our body. Yes, the left hand side, we have the presence of an organic group that is hydrocarbon group. I can try it. CH3, CH2, 14 times COONA. So this is how the structure goes. So one side it is have purely an organic content, hydrocarbon content. The other side it is having a combination of carboxylic acid and uh, sodium. That is an ionic part is on the other side. So I can say this organic part is uh, hydrocarbon is hydrophobic type hydro water heating type you know it's very simple you spill a little of oil and water it will float the water and the oil won't mix then we call that a water heating or a hydrophobic area and the right hand side, uh, this carboxylic acid group is called as a hydrophilic group. We learnt in uh, surface chemistry. Emulsions. Emulsions uh, is a liquid and liquid type of uh, uh, colloidal system. And uh, here the whole concept of uh, uh, soap and how it acts uh, will be mainly focusing on to the emulsion area. That's fine. And how to prepare uh, soap? That process of uh, preparation of soap we call it as a saponification process. That is soap manufacturing process. We have to take a coconut oil 
and with the coconut oil we have to add a sodium hydroxide and you have to boil the mixture for some time and after some time the nature of the liquid will change you add a little of uh, common salts that sodium chloride the precipitation of the soap will take place and as usual you have to take the solution and filter it the soap part alone um, can be separated the filtrate filtrate can be discarded and uh, in the soap manufacture the main by product is a glycerol and glycerol as you know it is an a trihydric alcohol so the saponification process will get a, a semi solid a soap with that you add some color or add uh, some fragrance and make it into a particular shape then uh, our soap is ready for a use now the question arises so all the manufacture of soap is okay and how that soap uh, cleans our body actually when you are applying on to the face as i told you the greasy surface would have been uh, attracted the dirt or dust particles and nowadays the pollution level is too high if you travel in chennai and not send it to south chennai and you wipe it wipe your face with the tissue paper the tissue paper changes into black color the intents of uh, the dust the smoke uh, all the unwanted uh, particulate matter in the air nowadays it is increasing alarmingly so all those uh, dust particles are fixed on our uh, skin now when we are uh, applying a soap along with that we'll add a water also so during the process you can see the froth or the foam appears so what is actually happening this is uh, organic content uh, hydro hydrocarbon content is uh, organic soluble this is the chemical formula of the soap in a particular uh, maybe we will take a vessel there the greasy portion will have an interaction with the hydrocarbon part it gets easily dissolved so after it's being dissolved this carboxylic acid part is available on the surface of the grease so this part is a water attracting part the sodium ion will release the carboxylic acid group and it will be available like this now this hydrophilic uh, carboxylic acid group will try to move towards the water because it's water loving one side is uh, hydrophobic organic content attaches with the grease and the other side is hydrophilic group that is having an attraction for the water now what happens all these uh, carboxylic ions along with the dirt uh, will jump into the water and they form uh, a droplet called as a measles and all these uh, measles uh, are having the carboxylate ions on the surface that means they have a negative charge on the surface similarly imagine another uh, d- a dirt drop that is we called as measles that is having negative part uh, neighborhood we learned in surface chemistry that uh, negative negative colloids uh, will start repelling so all the these measles will be along with the water that's why you see after a um, particular cloth is uh, cleansed uh, before cleansing the water color will be different after cleansing or cleaning the cloth then water will gain a, uh, a turbid color that is because of uh, the droplets of the measles now you can understand the surface chemistry's role in uh, chemistry in everyday life the cleansing action of soap the the soap added is acting like an uh, emulsifier so let me quote you an easy example so that you will understand this concept imagine these days you are very free and uh, you have a lot of attraction for uh, a video game or a playstation all that gadgets uh, are pulling you 
you are being attached for the video game, you are sp spending most of your time with that. Then there is a ringing of your calling bell and you open the door, there you can see you are a friend is awaiting with a, a football. And uh, these days it is not allowed to go and play. Imagine it is some other occasion, he is inviting you to come for the games. And your friendship is playing a role of uh, pulling this uh, greasy molecules and hydrocarbon and uh, attachment of a grease. The soap is uh, acting like a friend now. It will go and pull you out of your home. That means uh, you are uh, leaving the video game and coming out of your home for the game. And afterwards you have some other friends with you. You will have your own uh, group and start playing in a ground. So that uh, disturbance of dirt or the video game will be avoided. And uh, coming to your measles concept, uh, you have different different uh, groups of students from maybe different schools. They play in the same playground. Uh, you don't mix together because uh, they are all having their own team of playing and you are having your own team of playing. And this is how the soap is uh, doing the job of uh, cleansing, cleaning. And the same nature, the detergent will also work. See, detergents uh, are long chain alkyl hydrogen sulfates. Or sometimes they are uh, long chain alkyl benzene sulfonic acid groups. So the detergents, uh, as I told you, they are stronger compared to soaps. And the detergents can be classified into three types. Uh, the first type is uh, anionic detergents. What are they? That is, um, we can take the end part of this alkyl part is on the left hand side. The end part has a negative finish. That is sulfonic acid. So these are the anionic detergents. And uh, when we talk about uh, cationic the same long chain organic group and right ammonium combination is there tetraalkyl ammonium with the chloride molecule available these are cationic ions sometimes these detergents are non-ionic that means they may be long chain esters ester combination may be there and uh, they can have on the tail end uh, with the primary alcoholic groups uh, 3 in number they don't have uh, actually a um, negative or positive end so all these are the types now the question arises how come these detergents can be very stronger detergents sometimes they will work even with acidic condition and detergents even they will work with the hot water too. Soaps are very good only with the soft water. That means if the salt contamination is more in uh, water, the cleansing action will get uh, decreased. Suppose you take uh, uh, soap and try to wash your face in Marina Beach, the sea water. You can see soap, soap will get precipitated easily. A lot of soap will be wasted but lensing action will be very less because uh, soaps are a soft in nature. Whereas detergent will do a little job. That means in uh, home also for cleansing the cloth, uh, we go for detergent powder or detergent liquid and we go for uh, the detergent bars for cleaning the dirt. There, even little bit of saltiness is available, they will sequester those ions uh, and remove them uh, from the water and do the cleansing action as we discussed now, the mechanism of cleaning of soap, measles formation, everything will be same. Finally, they will uh, uh, remove the dirt out of the place. But uh, uh, 
the nature uh, differs. Uh, at the beginning I told you detergent you can't use it for uh, washing your face or uh, taking bath. And the reason you know they are stronger in nature uh, so that they may affect your skin. So this is I think an uh, interesting area for you to understand. Every day we are using these uh, soaps and detergents uh, and how do they clean your uh, textile or cloth we have understood today. A soap molecule is made up of a long hydrocarbon chain that has a carboxylic acid on one end. This carboxylic acid is joined to a sodium ion. The long tail like hydrocarbon part of a soap molecule is nonpolar and hydrophobic. In other words, while it is not soluble in water, it is soluble in nonpolar compounds such as oil. The short ionic part of the soap is polar and hydrophilic and it is soluble in water. When an oil stained cloth is soaked in soapy water, the hydrophobic tails will orient towards the oil stain, meaning the hydrophilic tails will be facing outwards. This ball like structure with hydrophobic ends towards inside and hydrophilic ends towards outside is called micelle. The hydrophobic ends in the micelle center will dissolve oil and remove the stain. Now that we have looked at the structure of a soap molecule, let's see how soap differs from detergent. Soaps are long chain carboxylic acids with sodium or potassium salts. Detergents are long chain carboxylic acids with ammonium or sulfonate salts. Soaps are most effective in soft water and ineffective in hard water. Hard water contains dissolved calcium or magnesium ions. Soap molecules react with Ca2 plus or Mg2 plus ions and form insoluble compounds that appear as precipitate. Because detergents do not react with calcium or magnesium ions, they are effective even in hot water. Let's see how soap and detergent cleans when used in hot water. Begin by filling two beakers with hot water. In one, add a soap solution and in the other, add some ordinary laundry detergent. Shake the beakers well. After a few seconds, you will see the beaker containing the detergent solution develop a rich foam. And in the beaker with the soap solution, a curd-like layer will form. 